Hello everyone. My name is Fa Jamiseyo. My name is I'm sure you're familiar with who I am. Uh, so today's topic would be interaction and accessibility in UX. Okay. Interaction and accessibility UX design. So um I'll be taking you through a basic um a basic you know understanding of what accessibility and interaction is. And then during our training session, we have some practical aspects of it so that you get to see out some things and you get to learn through as well. So diving in. Um like I said, today's learning goal is to learn about interaction, micro interaction, accessibility in US, and best practices of this of doing accessibility in US. Now, when it comes to interaction design, interaction design focuses on creating uh engaging interface with well thought out behaviors. It involves understanding how users interact with technology and ensure that these interactions are intuitive, efficient, and enjoyable. Basically, it means that uh when we are designing our product it's the problem you're trying to solve by the time you're converting that problem idea into usable products through your design you're trying to create you know interaction for users so that it will be very easy for them to do they will be happy to they'll be excited about clicking this clicking that and, and this involves you know um some things they're seeing in your in your design like when you go to an exciting website and you see certain animation working on those things excites you. It makes you visiting those websites, it makes it enjoyable. In uh, situations where you download an app and the onboarding screen is giving you some onboarding that are animated, all the little interaction gets past the height of your users. And in the process, when you're clicking a button or when you're imputing, feeling, uh, uh, um, uh, what is it called? A feeling a, a form to sign up, your sign up form. They notice how when they click on this as they're typing, all those processes are literally to interaction. And some of this interaction could be like designing patterns, meaning um the navigation menu that you have, the search bar, when they click on the search bar, the way your search result appears when the user clicks on the search bar. Those are basic interaction. The way like it's like it's a form field you know there are different types of form field inputs for you can create when you fill in a form for sign up for login or for anything that has to do with forms in your uh in your app or your website all those little interaction meaning uh like when users are uh, taking google Meet, for example the interaction of when i click on an emoji and we display the animation all those things are lead to interaction are micro interaction that user finds enjoyable that makes them want to use your product more um and some of this micro interaction like i was saying micro interaction as well on the website where you have some open state or some button some loaders you see some platform or some product have very very nice animated loading states um you go some websites you see some website you show you 100 loading all those little interactions, oh, they are called micro interaction because they are small details that users still pay attention to. Uh, and um, it will even be your model when the user is trying to make an action, the way the model comes in, the little illustrations that are showing on your website, how the illustration is being moving around, all the little interactions are called micro interaction. And these are the things that also make user experience very, very interesting. You go to for example, Kuda website, the way on their own page, you can see on their area section, you can see how they have it. Uh, Kuda have, I have a spinning round of different banks showing that those are different banks you can send money to or different activities you can perform on your platform. The way it just goes round, those are little, little interaction. The drop downs on, on websites where on the on the menu, there's a drop down, and then when user clicks on it, the way the drop down appears to them. All those little interactions are whole micro interactions and stuff like that. Then user flow and user flow in the sense that 
the way your flows are easy for you guys, meaning from the onboarding process for uh, taking um um what's the word e-commerce for example, the checkout process, how the user clicks from those indicators and onboarding that is already telling you that, that you have four steps. Those are like interaction and the way you're done with step one and this information, you see that it moves to the next step. Those are interactions. You just see how the interaction is working. All these little bits of are part of your interaction. So interaction design is a like major part of all your UX as well. These are process that makes you know things easy for your user and enhancing the UX of the product you are uh, you are uh, producing. All right. Um, an example is also during the checkout flow after buying stuff on Junior or any of the e-commerce platform. You see those steps that they put from after checking out. When you click on checkout, you see the next step is where you put your shipping address, payment info. Those things are interaction because you're doing step by step. That's the, the way your user are interacting with the product. That those are all of these are you know interaction. Now, like task com uh, completion, for example, if you take a Trello, on the Trello board, there's a way you can move card from doing to in progress to done. The process of moving that card as the user is moving that card, that's an interaction for the users. So these are major interactions in your design that enhances, you know, UX for the users. Now, um, next is, uh, Accessibility. When we talk about accessibility, accessibility ensures that our digital products are usable by people with a wide range of abilities and disabilities. This includes users with visual, that is, those that are blind, visual uh, users that are auditory, meaning those that um, can't hear, those that are deaf, those that cannot move, those that cannot see, that is, people that have this uh, impaired. Um, impairment, meaning that they, despite having these disabilities, right, and abilities, right, they are able to actually still use your product. Um, perceivable. When we say accessibility should be uh, the key, uh, the key principles of you know accessibility in US, meaning it should be uh, your product should be perceivable, meaning information and user interface components must be present in ways that users can perceive, meaning that um, your product, the, the information you're putting there, the user should be able to assimilate this thing in terms of, the, though if, if that's where we come with the issue of color colors, where you're ensuring your color contracts is good. In terms of for those that are colorblind, your, that's the essence of, you know, when we exercise on this, this, this con the color contrast mm -hmm. is not good, it's majorly because there are people who have color blind, and we try to consider them such that so because they are color blind, and anybody that is color blind can use our product. We are using our colors in this way so that people who are color blind are able to still read and use our product. That is you making your product accessible to uh, to your users, right? Your your uh, the content that are put into past information for them. It's enough for them to understand, to assimilate. So your product is not everybody that knows how to read grammars or knows how to understand big English. But you put, you know, words that are very, very simple that somebody that does know very, very basic of English could actually understand. That is you making your product accessible to these people. And um, a part of the uh, principle is being operable, meaning that all kinds of users can actually use your product. They're able to operate your product. They're able to, or uh, you know, navigate through your product and you know, successfully use it. Meaning that ensuring that all the functionality you're putting, um, via the keyboard, the time interaction, in the sense that maybe when you're telling them to load something, and you're not rushing too much because you're considering people that are slow in reading and stuff like that. You, meaning that no matter the kind of user that you have, they'll be able to use your product. And like I said, understandability, meaning understandable, meaning that 
anybody that is a builder can understand the language there. You're not using big grammars for them. You're using very, very simple terms. And aside that, you know, when you download an app and you give a walkthrough of, uh, uh, for example, when you join Slack for the first time, Slack gives you a walkthrough, meaning it's giving us a stand understandably uh, understandable they're trying to make it understandable to you that's why they're giving you that initial um onboarding tour by telling you this function this this function this and i'm sure when you first downloaded the to uh figma as so when you first joined figma figma had a walkthrough that you should click on this this is for this they are making you understand your product that is also a split because they know you're a new user you're not familiar with this so they decide to walk you through certain things that is going on on their hat and that is you be, uh, you making your product being understandable for all the kinds of users that you have. Now, aside now, we have best practices that the best way that you know we can use to um, most work ensure that our products are good accessibility and also you know good interaction. And for example. Uh, the screen reader compatibility, meaning that on your product, you should be able to set the whole anti blue ray stuff for those that have an uh, effect. You should be able to function in light mode, dark mode for you know users' choice because of the kind of users height they have. Color contrast, you have different tools that can use to check you know color contrast. You have the uh, co contrast check cap plugin and you know. Um, other uh, staff plugin from Sketch is if that's for those that use Adobe XD, then right? And and the contrast in terms of the background and where the text is, if they are you know compatible, if they are visible, if they can read. Now, resizable text in the sense that um, on your products, people with different um, eye conditions should be able to read your text. Meaning, if I want my text to be big, I should be able to make there should be some settings in your Tab that makes me make the text in the product big. If I want it very tiny, I should be able to do it. That's why, for example, app like um, Twitter, if you go to the accessibility setting, you see where you can increase the font size of you know the app and you can reduce the font size. Same thing with WhatsApp, you can increase your WhatsApp font size, you can reduce it. Even in your mobile phone, there's a way you can increase the font sizes and there's a way you can reduce it, it's adaptable it's easily. Uh, you know, do that. That's why, I mean, this was uh, text also have to be in responsive view as well. Meaning, when you're designing, when I'm viewing your product on the mobile, I should be able to equally see it as well as the way I see it when I'm looking at it on the website, right? So, these are things, uh, best things that you need to do in terms of accessibilities. And uh, also, forms, for example, when I talk about form accessibility, meaning that when you have a form, if you have proper labeling, and which I believe I showed in some of the prototype I was doing last week, showing that when you're signing up at the state where it's showing that yes, I'm filling it, when there was error, when it has showed that for fully filled it. All this process is me making my sign up process accessible such that my user will understand what is happening. Now, for when you have video content, that like media content like video pictures and stuff, if you notice your video for people that don't see it very well, you can put caption. That's why there's caption where users can read what's happening. Like Google Meets now, Google make an option where for those that can't hear, you can activate captions to read the caption of whatever we is speaking is saying, right? It transcribes it and you're able to read it. These are little little things that make um that make um, accessibility for your, that, that provide accessible, good accessibility for your products. And in terms of um, cognitive accessibility, meaning there's simple and clear languages, there's proper instruction, meaning there should be high icon everywhere you feel like, okay, user might not really understand, such that when they go there, there'll be a tooltip that is explaining further what the purpose of that function or of that action on your product is. I am sure you will have found it in different websites and different mobile apps that you're using. And you're trying to, in a situation where people post sensitive stuff, they should be sure about, oh, this is a sensitive stuff. If you're high, you don't you know what there is. You give users ability to attack that, that, okay, this product, yeah, trying to post with your sensitive 
stuff and users know that oh this is sensitive i don't want to see it right so these are the, the part of the things you do you know um to make accessibility good and having a good accessibility in your product gives also gives good ux as well because there are a lot of people with different conditions we have people that are deaf blind and stuff for people that are blind there should be stuff that has voice recognition voice action on your product such that even though i'm blind i can use my voice to operate the platform all right and um uh moving to the next one so some of the tools that we use for accessibility testing there's the screen uh, voiceover that there is on mac os there yeah, um there are different guidelines and standard about accessibility these are you know enhanced technologies that when building they use these tools to you know to ensure that there are accessibility and stuff this these tools here and resources involves you when actually you know implementing your products and stuff like that so i want to go back for a second to emphasize on situations like form button face and all and i remember last week i was talking about different states of button different kind of buttons and all of those things. those little little things are part of what really make accessible are part of you giving interaction and accessibility at the same time especially with your phone for example if you can recall last class we talked about uh when we were doing prototyping in the prototyping there was different screens that was showing when there was an error of rock mail and you can see the message telling you please impute a valid email address that is me providing accessibility for them to understand what is going on and that is you know another way of interaction as well so these things are really, really important in our design. My goal is to ensure that you guys understand this, right? And I know that some of you will have more questions during the Q&A session uh, that we have later this week on Wednesday. So um, on Wednesday, we'll now have another practical aspect where I show you guys how to create certain buttons, how to um create certain in input field and i also be providing resources to those um practice so um i'm looking for we'll seeing you guys on wednesday and i hope that after this class after listening to this you'll be able to understand more about interactions and you know understanding accessibility but accessibility is really important as a product designer you need to ensure your product is accessible accessible to all kinds of users and for you to understand more about apps that you currently use go to their settings and see the accessibility settings and see what are the things that you put there and for that gives you you know more insight about you know how important accessibility is example is twitter just go to twitter for example and just go check their accessibility settings and you see the kind of things they put there to make things easy for you know different ranges of users and stuff like that so Thank you, and I'll see you in. Hola.